Those are beautiful pictures. And Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson's here. Oh, this is why we keep this guy around. So, <laughs> what exactly oh, one are we... One of the reasons. <laughs> I knew there was a reason. What are we looking at there when we see that? And also, do we have any shot of seeing him again tonight? Slight chance tonight. Not probably as good as last. I'll explain that in a second. But think about a neon light, okay? okay. The, the colors that you have in that light are caused by the electricity going through an exciting gases inside of that light fixture. Now, in our atmosphere, something happened somewhat similar. There was a solar flare, a giant eruption of energy on on the sun, those particles travel toward the Earth. They're drawn toward the magnetic poles, and when that happens, we get the aurora forming, mostly across areas of Canada. It was seen vividly in Iceland last night as well. It also occurs in the southern hemisphere, the aurora australis. And tonight, there's a chance because we had two coronal mass ejections, which is this giant eruption on the sun that occurred over the weekend. It takes longer than the speed of light for those particles to get to the Earth, but those charged particles head toward the Earth. They're exciting gases high up into the atmosphere, and we'll get that glow, and the different gases create the different colors that you see. The greens are quite common. The oranges and the reds become a little more rare. So as far as conditions outside, it's been a warm day. I don't know that we're going to see enough clear sky tonight to see them, but it should be moderately comfortable out there. It's worth a try right around midnight tonight. Look to the north, get away from city lights. All right, fingers crossed. Worth Thank a you, try, Mike. yeah. So the Aurora Borealis is created by geomagnetic storms caused by solar flare activity, and that can impact our energy infrastructure and energy grid. A professor at the University of Oklahoma is going to study how our renewable energy sources like wind and solar react to the Aurora Borealis. So according to the university's plan, he will first study ways to prevent a power grid failure, then he'll look at ways to detect geomagnetic storms or other grid disturbances and see the impacts these storms could have. And that study will happen over five years. And we love seeing your photos mm -hmm. of the Northern Lights. So please keep them coming. Thanks for uh, those of you who have already sent them in. You can also post them to our Discover Colorado Through Your Photos Facebook page.